So here at Salado Wildlife Education Center with John McGregor, which that normally means we're going to look at a snake, right? Uh, normally, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I mean what else is there? <laughs> <laughs> so you're the state herpetologist, but you, you're fascinated with snakes, and you study snakes quite a bit. Right? I, I do. I started when I was about six and never stopped. Speaking of fascinating, we have something today that's pretty fascinating. Uh, how, we have a two-headed copperhead. Now, how many times in your career have you seen this? I have seen one two-headed copperhead in my life. That's this one right here. Wow. And, and so what, what causes a snake? I mean, we you know that it even happens in humans from time to time, but what causes a snake to have two heads? It, it's probably, it was probably going to be twins, mm -hmm. and, and it just never separated. You and the Slater Wildlife Education Center acquired this snake as a, as a couple in, was it Leslie County? Yeah, Leslie County. They physically see the snake in the yard, and they knew, hey, this, this, this is something odd. I've never seen this before. They give you a call, and you knew that the chances of it living in the wild probably weren't yeah. that great. Yeah, actually, they called the conservation officer, okay. and then he <clears throat> went to look at it, and then he sent, sent us a photo of it and mm -hmm. asked if we were interested in it, mm -hmm. and uh, sure. Yeah. So I, I drove down to Hyden and picked up a, a, a two-headed copperhead. So it's been on display here at Slato Wildlife Education Center for about a week. We've had it for around two weeks or so, right? Right. And once, once you had a snake like this in your possession, what did you think its chances were of survival? Uh, pretty low, maybe 5%. Yeah. Uh, but when, if it's, once it starts eating, then it's kind of over the hump, and, mm -hmm. and it probably has a chance of living close to a normal lifespan. This snake was brought in because it was so unique, and if this snake grows to maturity, is it going to be released back into the wild? And the answer to that would be? The, the, the answer is no. Uh, it, it would still, no matter if it gets to be two feet long and healthy, mm -hmm. it would still not survive in the wild. So it's actually very fortunate for the snake that it was found and, and called and, uh, and, and it gets to be here on exhibit. Yeah, yeah we think so. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your, all your knowledge okay. in, uh, in, in showing us this snake. So I'm here with Heather Tichy, director of the Salado, Salado Wildlife Education Center. So anytime we have newborns around the Slato Center, it's an exciting time, but this is totally different, huh? Uh, yeah, it's completely different. I mean, he, he came to us, you know, already born. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's different for us, the fact that he has two heads. And uh, it complicates things a little bit because he is a venomous snake, but we're, we're taking the best care of him that we can. In captivity, what do, you, what do you feed this snake? He's eaten four times since he's been with us. And he's eaten pinky mouse twice, which is little chunks of baby mouse. Um, mm -hmm. And then he's eaten frog legs twice. Okay. And that's more of their natural diet would be frog in the wild. I'm sure that when this snake first got here, it created a lot of excitement within the staff. We initially didn't tell the world that we had this snake because the chance of survival wasn't known at that point in time. Yeah, he had a pretty low chance of survival since we didn't know for sure if he had eaten. And he had shed once, which made John think that he had eaten already. Mm -hmm. But we just, we didn't know what to expect. And we initially thought, we'll wait, get him stable, get a baseline of behavior for him, and mm -hmm. then we'll introduce him to the public. So then you, you, you're putting uh, bits and pieces of uh, either frogs or mice in there. Mm -hmm. and. I guess you came back and you saw, saw the food was gone. Do you know which head it's eating out of? Actually, yes. We just got footage of him eating over the weekend. So for someone that wants to come and see this snake, um, it, it has been on display a little bit. You had an opening day to where, you, I mean, TV crews, everyone wanted to come see this snake, didn't they? Oh, yeah. We had, we had media coming out here. They were really interested in him. Um, we actually had the first guests walk through. They didn't even know what they were walking into, and they got <laughs> interviewed. They were both really excited that they got to be the first people to see him. It was a really big day at Slato. It generated a lot of excitement. And now that he's been uh, advertised, we have a lot of people, we're drawing a lot of people through the door that might nor not normally come here this time of year. So, so Slato is actually located at the headquarters of the Department of Fish and Wildlife. And uh, so for someone who wants to come to Frankfurt and see this snake, when can they, when can they come and check him out? We like to have him on display between 10 and 4 every day. Now, okay. we do recommend that you call beforehand because it's based on his stability, it's based on our staff. 10 to 4, and what days are you open? It's Tuesday through Saturday. Tuesday okay. through Friday we open at 9 and close at 5, and on Saturdays we open at 10 and close at 5. Okay. Well, it is a really, really unique opportunity to come check out a two-headed copperhead here at the Slato Center. Thanks for uh, showcasing the snake to us, sure. and uh, hopefully the interest level stays high and he stays healthy. Hopefully. That, that's our hope.